Uh, good morning, my name is Kevin O'Rourke. I work uh, at the Dublin Institute of Technology with the lead on, on this project. Let's let my colleagues introduce uh, themselves here. Yeah, my name is Daniel Maxweeney. I work in the Institute of Technology in Blanchardstown. I'm Dara Casty, Director of Online Learning at Hibernia College. Jane Harvey, Head of the Learning Teaching and Technology Centre in DIT. I uh, just want to thank Jane for standing in because Margaret Keane uh, from IT Tele is, is ill and, and Jane uh, stepped in at the last minute to, uh, to be the fourth member of the, of the, of the consortium. Uh, as I said, uh, we're, I guess uh, while, while the, um, uh, the title of our, of our uh, uh, application is an e-portfolio strategy, really what we are about is, uh, I suppose, uh, new forms of assessment and, and new forms of curriculum. And we're part of uh, the ITT, ITB and, and DIT are members of, of what's called the Technological University for Dublin Consortium. And we are very much uh, working together uh, already to I suppose to, to look at new forms of curriculum, new forms of, 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 of learning for students, and new ways of, 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 of doing, I suppose, third level education. Uh, we brought in uh, Hibernia College, uh, as I say, we've moved to the dark side, or we brought in the dark side in terms of the private sector, uh, fully uh, the online uh, kind, of, uh, kind of digital capacity that, that we have a lot to learn from as well. So we're delighted to have Dara on board with us. But already, I suppose, what we have is we have established uh, in the past year uh, new programs, or we, we're designing new programs, what we're calling programs for the future, uh, within the, the context of, of the consortium. Uh, we, we have international advisors currently. We're working with Oxford Books. We're working with the University of Ontario currently as well. And uh, we're, we're very much, I suppose, in the process of, of finding new ways of, 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 as I say, designing curriculum. We've got uh, currently, uh, within the context, a, a um, uh, I suppose a, a strategy that is going to include e-portfolios and all the new programmes that we develop, and that's become part of the uh, uh, of part of the matter. But what we have discovered, of course, is that most of our lecturers, even though they're imaginative in approaching new forms of curriculum, have uh, I suppose a poor understanding for the most part of what an e-portfolio is. They tend to regard them as as repositories for for assessments, as opposed to uh, kind of uh, uh, I suppose tools that can be used in a digital age to kind of uh, change the curriculum and drive change overall. Uh, I suppose they're used to the most part to our VLEs which tend to be used as panopticons you can watch and observe the students whereas e-portfolios have the capacity to empower students to actually demonstrate how they themselves are meeting learning outcomes that we have um, that, that, that we've printed or we've negotiated with them uh, we've also I suppose to date all have had minor experience with e-portfolios it's tended to be an opt-in at an individual level we're looking at team implementation uh, which we hope will actually uh, overcome that notion to uh, uh, the, the failure that's to date of implementing e-portfolios at scale across our, our, our colleges okay uh, overall I suppose uh, we're looking at uh, I suppose uh, going beyond VLEs going beyond tools and bring into a, a whole new mentality around the notion of, of what a curriculum can be and what a program for the future uh, could be. To that end, uh, the project over six months will involve very much a ramping up of, of existing, I suppose, ideas and kind of the whole week that we plan around it would involve not just ourselves but perhaps even a national, uh, we're hoping to expect it to be a national e-portfolio forum, perhaps the first of, of, of an annual thing that might uh, come down the line to us. Uh, I'm going to pass over to, uh, to, to Daniel here who's going to talk around the, the whole notion of, of what we're going to do. Yeah, so we've broken down the project in, into, I suppose, six-month milestones. The first month we, we, we called orientation and consultation. It's really about establishing uh, program teams across the different institutions. Um, these teams will consist of academics, uh, students, uh, library uh, uh, or subject matter experts, and perhaps learning technologists who are interested in the implementation and inclusion of e-portfolios into, into their curricula and, and, and programs. Um, what we're also hoping to do in month one is to engage or to second somebody into a full-time coordinator role for the e-portfolio project, and that person will commence with some desk-based research, which will start to look at international best practice and existing frameworks and case studies that can inform us as, as we commence work with our teams. And um, all going well, we'll start to initiate a, a survey process across the uh, various uh, Irish higher education institutes to try and assess their current levels of uh, adoption and use of um, of e-portfolio systems. Um, moving on then into month two, what we're going to do in month two is, is place a particular emphasis on technologies. Um, we'll, we'll start off by looking uh, or working with our identified program teams uh, and run some workshops with them to, to maybe explore best practice, case studies, and in particular look at technologies and ways that they can uh, implement e-portfolio systems in, in assessment and teaching on their programs. 
we'll continue this research, and in month two we'll really start to look at the different technology solutions that uh, are available for e-portfolio adoption. We're aware we've all used uh, systems like Mahara and PebblePad, but we believe in some cases they've limited our adoption of e-portfolio systems, and we're interested in looking at perhaps new or open source offerings that might allow us to, to mainstream e-portfolio use in the institutes. Uh, month three is really about community uh, and uh, building and development, and it's uh, the month where we'll start to plan for hopefully a, a week-long forum uh, on e-portfolio use and adoption. Uh, we're planning a three to four day event uh, sometime in March, um, all going well, in which we bring together uh, program teams, academics, um, representatives from organisations who are looking to, uh, I suppose, use e-portfolios in, in our curricula, um, and, and to bring in international experts, hopefully, to submit and discuss case studies, best practice, and, and just to help inform uh, and, uh, and, and spread the word about the project. Um, in, in, in month four, um, what we're really planning to do then in that month is actually run the forum. Um, and in month four, uh, we'll promote the, for, uh, the forum through the, the national forum and other channels, and hopefully start to disseminate our early results on the project. Um, we'll also uh, begin a, in earnest, I suppose, development of our framework and documentation of our framework, and begin to release aspects of that on a website. So we can see by month three or by month four, making a publicly available uh, website which will, which will discuss some of the, the work, some of the implementation across program teams uh, and some of our best practice that we're discovering. Um, in month five, we're, we're looking really at uh, consolidation and review, which is basically to start to uh, 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 finalise our framework with an emphasis on how individual practitioners could adopt uh, um, e-portfolio systems technology options that should be considered and how they can be adopted and how organisations might take on e-portfolio strategies across the curriculum. Um, then into uh, month six, uh, what we're looking to do then is to uh, release our final version of our framework to hopefully then uh, launch and run a continuing support mechanism. We have in mind some type of a CPD offering, perhaps a MOOC style offering or a series of short courses or online seminars in which people who are interested in, in implementing or using uh, e-portfolio systems moving forward can attend and engage with a CPT style offering. And finally, to, to look for ourselves to engage in some type of uh, uh, feedback and analysis of our own project work over the six month period. So I'll hand you over now to Dara, who'll talk a little bit more about how we're actually going to implement some of this. Okay. Um, so just to kind of... No, I'm going to go forward. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so I have to go forward rather than back. Just to, to 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 make concrete what um, what Daniel has spoken about. What are what are we actually going to produce? What will the outputs of this project be? Um, an e-portfolio framework. So that can be quite a nebulous term, but our idea is that we will have clearly articulated ideas about e-portfolios, what they can be used for and how they can be used and how people, learning technologists, other support staff can work with academics to help them embed the use of e-portfolios into their projects. Um, we'll have a website where all these resources will be available. Part of that website will be a forum. We would be hoping to uh, uh, generate communities of practice have this as a, a central resource that people could come to when they're trying to institute e-portfolio project, projects within their own organisations. We have the e-portfolio event, which um, Daniel has talked about, um, and that would be very much about sharing practice, hearing about expertise from other countries, but also from students who have used portfolios themselves and how they have found the value that they have found in using them Similarly, people who are teaching who have used portfolios and the value that they have found um, to, to, to encourage what more widespread use of the portfolios. Um, and then structured training and a CPD MOOC. So the website will also be, in a sense, a course or will provide access to a course that can be used. It can be delivered perhaps by us at the end of the process as a MOOC, although maybe OOC, because I don't know about massive, um, a small a SOOC. Um, uh, or it can be delivered in individual institutions by, as I said, learning technologists, learning support people, but they have all the tools they need there to deliver this CPD course to their staff to help them develop their e-portfolio capacities. 
so some of the principles behind that are informing the project. Number one, we're, we're going to consult with a range of stakeholders, so not only the learning technologists and the academics, but also so we feel students are very important because a lot of students are already doing a lot of e-portfolio type activities such as blogging, they may have LinkedIn profiles, they have a lot of things going on that they may not necessarily recognize as, as e-portfolio or, or link to that. So it's creating those kind of link linkages to their existing practice. Um, and also we think it would be useful to include employers, the employer voice at those consultations to get a sense of what are the skills that you are looking for from students of particular courses when they come to you looking for jobs. A, a problem that's been identified with students is it, it's often difficult for them to, to, to make the linkages between what they've done in their course of study and something that, that, that can be useful in an employment context. So an e-portfolio is a very, because of the reflective nature of it, it offers a lot of scope while somebody is studying to really put all that learning into a context that can be very useful for them after they, they complete their course. Um, that we will include students and support staff, so it's not only academics that this, this project is targeting, um, that we will model e-portfolio approaches. This was something that we felt was, was important. Um, it's a very much an iterative process. It starts with the equivalent of a personal development plan, it's our own identification of what it is we need to do, what the gaps are, um, and reflection will be very much part of the process. So we envisage that throughout the process we will be reflecting on our progress and what we've done, but also blogging about it, and that will be a very important, important both reflective tool, but also a way of disseminating information about what we're doing and publicising it through the use of um, Twitter, for example, uh, and in that way driving people to the website when it, is, when it becomes available. Um, and then the final one is to create clear pathways and easy to use resources. I think there is a lot of, there are a lot of resources out there um, in the whole e-portfolio space already. JISC in particular has, has a range of resources that are very useful and, and will provide a very useful starting point for us. What we would like though is to have something in a way that's, that, that has an element of prescription about it. So if you are looking to actually implement this on the ground. These are steps that you should take and we'll make templates available that can help with that process um, to, 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 to enable this to be something that happens at scale. So it's not just at the moment there are lots of pockets of innovation, but this is something that if we have a more formalized approach, it's possible to extend it to a wider audience perhaps than, uh, than, than previously. Sorry, my mouth is getting a bit dry. <laughs> so one of the, um, one of the, 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 there's two strands to this, obviously. There's using e-portfolios within courses, and then there's a the professional development of, for example, lecturers. I think Kevin's first slide had a quote about it's really only through using an e-portfolio that you really get to, to appreciate the value of an e-portfolio. So if you have, it's one thing deciding, okay, all, all courses are going to have an e-portfolio component in them, so your job as a lecturer is to, is to put that, um, make that component part of your course. The reality is, unless you have your own e-portfolio and you've worked through the processes involved, you won't really get the, the most out of it. You won't be in a position to integrate e-portfolio work into your courses in a meaningful way. So our approach to getting lecturers and academics up to speed on e-portfolios is to have them develop their own e-portfolio. So starting with their own personal development plan, identifying what it is they need to achieve this integration that they're being asked to do, and then working with them to help them to move them along that process so they get to finally that they have created a course that has a significant e-portfolio element, they have their rubrics that they need to assess those portfolios, and then they also have their own resources for their own e-portfolio and they have their reflective journey. 
this ties in very much with the professional development framework. So the, 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 the need for this portfolio approach is, is, is coming from, from both from the student side and from the, the lecture um, professional development aspect. Sorry, am I talking to you? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, so um, we we have a, a detailed project plan which is available um, if you're interested in seeing that we've broken down by month. The, the structure is that we'll have a steering group and we will appoint a project coordinator and that's what we'll be using a lot of the funding for is to have somebody working full time on this which will be very important and they will work with individuals and individual teams within the institutions and so supported by the individu individu sorry, individuals. Um, yeah, so for promotion, we're looking at social media, um, the, the website that we create and the resources, and the C CPD MOOC alternative, or the, and the national the e-portfolio week that we have talked about. And uh, sorry, John, to to one minute for the evaluation. Thank you very much. Uh, obviously, because it's an iterative process, evaluation is integral to the success of the project. So there's various dimensions to this, and the first level is the project aims and objectives, how we could meet these and how we can be effective, efficient in our, our working. The second is the, the work with the programmes of the future, where identified project teams who are working with us, um, so there'll be very much a practitioner focus on that. And the third level is, is the, uh, the project deliverables and how we achieve that through um, formative practitioner-based research. And this is about the e-portfolio systems and making informed choices about the use and support of e-portfolios, but also about e-portfolio, how, how better they can be used um, to support assessment and also professional and personal development. So we'll be looking at the drivers and enablers round about that, levels of adoption, etc. And then finally, the, the needs round and about the use of e-portfolios, and in particular, um, linking into that in terms of the innovative use of e-portfolios as something slightly different. Um, in the first stage, uh, we're looking at what's already been done and uh, what needs to be done. Um, the mid-project is about the development of the framework and the selection process and use of, of portfolios. How can we do this? How can we do it better and more effectively? And working with uh, the stakeholder groups. And at the end of the project, it's more about the sustainability and the support in, into the future once uh, as part of the legacy project. The number of ways in which we could uh, look at impact uh, round about basic data analytics, round about what we're actually doing, um, but obviously we've got some baseline data. We're working with uh, academic staff to how well are we actually meeting the demands and the needs. They will be uh, working with us to, uh, as part of that evaluative process. So I suppose what we do and how we support it would be measured as part of that process. And things about raising awareness and changes in perception. Really sorry, it's last. Uh, Evaluation is always left to last. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there'll be more chance to explore yeah. this um, and to mark this to leave the Q&A. So thanks to all of you.